Slog FPV, have you ever had frame size buyer's remorse? Well, I have with the Fly B16. When I purchased this little ripper, the Fly B20 or 2 inch prop version was not available yet, so I compromised and bought the 16 instead. I really like this little guy, but I'm getting the feeling that I would like the 20 better. Um, I think the main reason being, I think I should be able to get a little more throttle range and granularity so you're not so high in the throttle at a hover and you should get better flight time. And the FlyWoo specs uh, basically state that I haven't validated these specs, but um, the Fly B20 with a 550 milliamp hour battery, the takeoff uh, percentage is 24% throttle. And then on the Fly B16, it is 26% for takeoff thrust. Uh, but the big difference is the flight time you get a full minute more with the Fly B20 than the 16, which is significant, and you get a little improvement in top speed. Uh, so I saw that you can just buy the frame kit for the Fly B20. Um, at the time of this video, I picked one up for $19.49 US. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to upgrade my Fly B16 frame to the Fly B20 frame and hopefully I will see some improvement in flight time and hopefully the flight characteristics and acro mode will be improved as well. Uh, there seems to be enough motor wire that I should be able to just be uh, just swap out the top plate here. You can see at the top and it should be a fairly simple simple upgrade. And again, I'm hoping that there's enough uh, extra motor wire. It looks like they, what they do in the assembly process is just have one version since the motors are the same. And they just kind of curl under the excess motor wire underneath on the 16. So I'm thinking that this should work out fine just by replacing this top plate. Wow, this is a very complete kit. Um, you have everything you need to do a, a total build, uh, which I'm not going to need. Uh, if you look here, they give you a spare antenna, you get a landing pad, you get the bottom tray for the 04 air unit, uh, you get the top camera mount plate, you get all the rubber bushings and all the screws and hardware and nuts, as you can see here. Uh, you get the main top frame, you get all the um, battery trays and accessories. Uh, you get the 04 Air um, light camera housing, and then you get a uh, support card with some QR codes on the back. Since I'm a slow, lazy old guy, I'm going to try and make this upgrade as simple as possible. The first thing I'm going to do is push the Express LRS antenna through the hole that mounts it in place. Um, then I'm going to attempt to use this toothpick to push the rubber grommets through the top plate frame that hold the, the camera in place without disassembling that. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and remove this TPU mounting screw that holds the 04 VTX antenna in place. And then um, remove the three screws on each of the motors. Uh, that hold them in place, and then uh, lastly remove the four top plate frame screws that hold the top plate on, and then reuse all the parts, of course, like the battery tray and then the camera mount itself with the rubber isolation grommets. We'll see if that's going to work. Express LRS antenna removed from mounting hole. Next, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can push these rubber bushings or rubber isolation mounts through their holes so I can detach the 04 camera. You can see there's three of them. Rubber grommets pushed through the holes that hold the camera in place. VTX antenna mount screw removed. You can see I used a 1.5 millimeter hex driver. Removed the props from the motors first and then unscrewed the three mounting screws that hold the motors in place. On all four motors. Next we're going to remove the four wire motor wire clamps on each of the arms. Remove the four screws that hold the top main frame plate in place. 
uh, unfortunately, uh, the way this thing is tied together, these are really long screws that go through the entire stack all the way through the 04 light air unit. It almost would have been better if they would have used the nut on the top. That way you could kept, keep the stack all in place to work on the thing. Um, but because it goes from the top down, um, you have to pull the screws totally out. And then, of course, everything comes apart. So um, that's a bummer. Uh, the other issue is the pigtail uh, doesn't fit through this hole here. So I'm going to have to uh, cut the uh, shrink tubing off. And hopefully, once the shrink tubing's off, I can just slide it through. Don't know. Hopefully, I don't have to desolder this. So I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is the motor wires are going to be plenty long enough with for the new frame. So not to worry about that. Bad news is this pigtail has this little daughter board here that connects the low ESR capacitor to the battery leads. Um, so I'm going to have to desolder this from the board. I think that's a better approach than trying to desolder it from the flight controller board. Um, I just uh, don't want to damage the, the pads on the, the main board here. So I think uh, this, do this board here, I'm just going to desolder it and then pull the pigtail wires through. Pigtail desoldered from XT30 connector. Since I have everything disassembled anyways, I'm going to go ahead and add this small buzzer with the wires, it only weighs two grams. Uh, this uh, model only has D-Shot Beacon, and the motors are so small, it's really hard to hear that. Um, so I think it's a better option. I soldered a red wire onto the five volt pad, and then a black wire onto Buzz Minus. I'll go ahead and link the flight controller pinout below, and you can see that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and solder on the buzzer itself. These buzzers do have a polarity, so don't remove the sticker until you've actually soldered it on. Uh, but if you do, uh, the, the longer lead is the positive. Plated soldering on the buzzer, added some shrink tubing. I'm just going to zip tie it to this antenna mount after I get everything assembled. Now's a good time to put the TPU battery holder in. It's a little fiddly. Um, you have to basically put the, the larger section in the rounded area and then turn it 90 degrees and then also and then once that's uh, uh, rotated 90 degrees then you kind of fit in the smaller half on the back end here i'm not sure if that's the the correct procedure but that's the way i did it was to do the thicker piece first turn it 90 degrees and then the the, the rear piece is, uh, there's another round, rounded out area on the back side that I just kind of pushed it through because it's thinner. To get these bumpers on the new frame, you need to kind of pinch them so that it creates a gap. I'm sure there are many ways to installing the stack. Uh, this is what I did. I started out by putting on the main top plate and then threading the standoffs through and then using the supplied nuts, um, cinching that uh, very lightly. You don't want to compress these rubber isolation grommets very much. And uh, then I'm going to be putting on the 04 VTX on top of that next. So I slid the VTX over the screws that uh, hold the stack in place, as you can see here. And then I installed the VTX antenna because I need a little more space to cinch that down from the top. Installed the four washers on top of the stack screws. Okay, have the captive nuts installed on top of the stack screws. You don't want to cinch this thing down too much. And again, you know, these are captive nuts, so they'll hold it in place. Motors mounted with the motor mount screws. I just used a very tiny little bit of Loctite on each of the screws. Four motor wire clamps installed. Okay, I got the, the camera mounted with the rubber isolation grommets. Um, I did knock the very tip of this toothpick off so I didn't poke through the rubber grommet. 
Then once I got started, then I used this little pair of angled tweezers to gently pull it the rest of the way through. Cool, I got the pigtail soldered back on, paying attention to polarity. You can see the little plus sign here. Then I also zip tied the deeper on the back. And so next I'm gonna fire up Betaflight and configure the buzzer so it turns on and then we'll take it for a flight. So the only changes I made in Betaflight is going to the configuration tab. I changed the craft name to Fly B20. Then I also um, enabled the beeper configuration where I have RX lost, it'll beep, arming, it'll beep. And then I also have RX set enabled. So it beeps when I have a channel set up to beep the buzzer. So that uh, leads into the modes tab. You can see aux four here, the beeper is enabled when it's a switch. I have a, a momentary switch that when I push on it, it will beep the buzzer so I can find it. And that's all I changed. Please check out my full review of the Fly B16, link below for context on my assessment. The only difference between the 16 and the 20 is the frame size and the prop size. So let's go over the pros, starting with flight time. With a 550 milliamp hour battery, I was getting over four and a half minutes of flight time as compared to four minutes with the Fly B16 frame. And on the 720 milliamp hour battery, I was getting closer to six minutes versus five and a half minutes. So again, 30 seconds longer of flight time. Moving on to noise level. I was expecting more noise abatement, more like a toothpick, but really they both sounded about the same, which actually surprised me. So don't expect the V20 to be significantly more quiet than the HD 16 frame. Let's talk about flight characteristics. This is where I think there was a big improvement in flyability. And what I mean by that, it's way easier to fly slower. So for new pilots, I would definitely point them in the fly, fly B20 direction. The 16 generates a lot of thrust with the three bladed props, so it doesn't like to go slow. So throttle management is more difficult. Uh, there is really better throttle range and linearity on the 20 as you're not always in the upper portion of the throttle range. Uh, because this is really a non nano cine model, they both fly flat and smooth, but because the 20 can fly slower, I would give the nod to the HD 20 for cine work. As far as acro um, flying, both are okay at nano acro. No, they're not like a five inch or even a three and a half inch quad as they are pushers, smaller, and not really designed for acro. I will have to give the nod again to the HD 20 frame as you can do light acro even with the heavier 720 milliamp hour battery. And it's much easier to catch at the bottom of let's say a power loop. So again, give the nod to the HD 20 frame. Talking about the other upgrade I did, the buzzer. I have complained many times that I think manufacturers on these larger nano builds like 2S, I think adding another two grams to the weight is well worth to be able to find your model in tall grass. You have a lot of money invested in these now that they have HD systems on board. So I think this upgrade is well worth it. It makes it really easy to locate your model when you land and you happen to land in some grass, even close by. It just makes it so nice uh, to be able to push a button and then hear the, the buzzer. The D-Shot beacon is just doesn't cut it. The motors are too small to generate any sort of noise to find the model. So changing topics to the cons. As I already stated, I think the upgrade and assembly is tricky and soldering even the two buzzer wires requires fine uh, fine soldering iron tip so um, please keep that in mind so who is this upgrade for it's for someone like me who does not mind assembly and has okay soldering skills and lastly has some frame size buyer's remorse other than that for everybody else I think just go out and enjoy your fly b16 it's a great little model and just don't worry about it. Just get outside and have some FPV fun. And that's what it's all about. So with that, I always appreciate you tuning in and watching my videos.